guys, I'm so excited to share something with you today. I just discovered why for the last four years, I have not been able to get my launch control to work properly. Now, I did do a video on how to wire up launch control, but I had one flaw with my method. The way I was doing it before is I was using the bottom clutch switch to do launch control, the uh, starter interlock it's called. That's the button that has to be depressed in order for your car to start. I was using that switch for launch control and flat shift. Now, it worked okay, but there were two small problems with it. Number one, for launch control, picture this. You're sitting at the, at the start line, okay? You're waiting for the light to go green. Your foot is all the way on the clutch. You're on the gas. Launch control is active, so you got your limiter at like 4,000 RPM or whatever. As soon as you start to lift your foot off the clutch, two millimeters, launch control turns off because it's that bottom button that's keeping launch control engaged but your clutch hasn't started engaging yet. So your revs just go through the roof and you might as well just not have launch control. It's not that effective unless you're just dumping the clutch, which might work for some people, but that's not the best way to set it up. You need to use the top clutch switch. That's the one that disengages cruise control if you rest your foot on the clutch. The problem with using the bottom switch for flat shift is even worse because picture this, you're in second gear, right? Foot to the floor, and I don't know about you guys, but if I'm flat shifting, I'm bringing that gear all the way to the limiter before I think about pulling the next one. So you're full throttle, you go for the flat shift, but your clutch pedal has to get all the way to the floor before the flat shift engages. So slow motion, here we go. You're full throttle, you're in second gear, 7,000 RPM, you're ready to flat shift into third. You start to depress the clutch pedal and you just over rev the motor because you're at full throttle at red line because your flat shift does not engage until the clutch gets all the way to the floor. In a good situation where you're using that top switch, your full throttle, 7,000 RPM, as soon as your foot touches the clutch, flat shift engages, then the clutch releases. So you're holding your flat shift RPM in between the gear, and then you let your foot off the clutch and you're back on the throttle again. Now, I could never get my launch control or my flat shift to work with that top switch, and the reason is because the switch was broken. So let me show you where that switch is, how you can tell if you're having the same problem on your Miata, and then all you guys can shoot flames like you always send me direct messages about how do I make my car shoot flames. This is another video to help you do that. So I'm gonna show you how to fix your clutch switch without having to buy a new one. It costs about two cents, and then we're gonna take the car out and test out some launch control and some flat shifting. So join me at the Miata. To get to the clutch switch, you'll have to come down into the pedal area. There's your clutch pedal, and up at the top of your clutch pedal, right there, you've got the top clutch switch, which you'll be using for launch control. And to remove it, You'll see a 17 millimeter nut right there and a little plastic plug right there. There's a little button on that plug in order to get it out. Once you loosen that nut, you'll notice it can freely twist. You just unthread that thing counterclockwise until it comes all the way out. Then you can unplug the little uh, plug that's plugged into it there are two tests you need to perform to make sure it's functional. Now this button is supposed to be spring-loaded and it's supposed to open and close the circuit. The problem I discovered with mine is it's not spring-loaded anymore. So obviously there's some kind of problem inside the switch with the spring. The spring might have broke or something happened inside there. So what my ECU thought is that the clutch is always out and if the clutch is always out, launch control will never engage. So I'm going to do my best to take this apart and fix the problem so I don't have to buy a new one. Now, if your button uh, spring action does still work, there's another test you need to do to make sure that the switch is functional. With one lead on each of the pins inside of the clutch switch plug, set your multimeter to check resistance. With the button out, there should be no resistance or very, very, very little resistance. When you push the button, it should open the circuit. So I can see that the switch functions, my button just doesn't return like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna start by undoing these little tabs with a very thin flat blade screwdriver. I'm gonna try not to stab myself here. Bend that bad boy up just like that. I'm going to do that to all four, and then the guts of the switch should come out. It could be ugly. 
Okay. Well, there's the button. So what the heck's wrong with the spring? Oh wow, I broke into a million pieces. Okay. The fix is a pen spring. So I'm gonna take this pen apart. Inside, there's a little spring, and I'm gonna hope it's stiff enough to work. That's what she said. Okay, so we're gonna put the spring in here. There's a little post it's gotta go on. the cheapest thing I've ever fixed. I'm just gonna take those tabs and bend them back into place. That'll hold this switch together. Now it's time to put that fully functional clutch switch back into the car. The little white button actually pops back out like it's supposed to. If the hat button does not pop out, then you have a problem with your clutch switch. As far as wiring up the launch control, it's actually super simple. On your Mega Squirt, whether you have a 3 or a 2 or a Pro or whatever it is, you got an options plug. And on the options plug, there is a pin called either clutch or launch or something like that. That's this wire right here. I know you can't see it, but bear with me. I'm going to take this launch pin and I'm going to solder it directly into the clutch wire, which on a 1.6, it's a brown and white wire. And that's all you have to do. And then you go into Megascord and you say, hey, I want to use the launch pin from the options plug for launch control. Now, I know that is not going to make a lot of sense how I just described it. But what you're going to do now is go into the link in the description to my website where I will fully lay out all the resources and descriptions you need to wire up the launch control properly. I just wanted to verbalize it in this video so you can cross-reference the two sources and do it on your own Miata. Now, next up, let's talk about launch control settings. Whether you're doing it on a tablet or on a laptop, you're just going to go to Engine Advanced and launch two-step. It's gonna bring up all your settings. The most important thing here is um, input on. That's, you're telling the Megasquirt what pin to use for the clutch switch signal. So you have to make sure that's right, otherwise your launch control won't work. And then you have a boatload of settings to set up your launch control, and that's gonna vary a lot depending on, you know, how you drive the car, what you want it to do, your traction, your power, all that. So if you wanna know how to set each one of these little things up, I have a little guide in that link in the description below. And all these little question marks, you can always click on them and it tells you what each thing does. So that's really helpful in learning the different settings, you know, especially if you're new to Megasquirt. So if you want to know some more details about that, link in the description. Another thing I also wanted to clear up pertaining to shooting flames helping the turbo spool. A lot of people don't understand that it's not necessarily just the flames and the exhaust that help the turbo stay spooled between shifts. Just the fact that you're leaving the throttle open during your shift helps the turbo stay spooled. Because think about it, if you lift off the throttle to shift, your blow off valve opens, it lets all that boost out. If you stay on the throttle during a shift, it's letting the turbo push air through the motor, even though it's not igniting anything, it's, it's letting that air go through the throttle, through the valves and everything. When you let the clutch back out, your throttle's still open, the turbo is still spinning very fast, and your boost comes back on just like that. It's super awesome. So the first thing I wanna do here is show you how to execute a flat shift. Now it's gonna be a little bit weird at first because your brain is gonna tell you that you need to let off the throttle in order to execute a shift. But with flat shift, the ECU does the work for you. You keep your foot planted. As soon as you touch the clutch, the ECU is gonna cut power to the engine. You select your gear, you let your foot off the clutch, and then the power comes back on like that and the boost comes back up very fast. So let me take the car out and show you what that looks like. Now we're gonna observe the boost gauge during a regular shift and during a flat shift. Now keep in mind that I have the car set up right now to not shoot flames. So the benefits that you see is just because I'm able to leave the throttle open during the shift.
So as you can see, the flat shift really helps maintain boost between gears. Now, it's not as strong of a contrast on a turbo like this that spools very fast, but if you have a bigger, more laggy turbo, it's gonna make a massive difference. Now let's check out a couple launch control settings. Now as you saw, there are several different settings you can change within your launch control, but I like to break them into two main categories. The people that like their neighbors, and the people that don't. Now being completely honest with you guys, I know the flames look really cool, but normally I just leave it on the nice, subtle, rev limiter style setting where it's not making a lot of noise or shooting flames. That stuff destroys your cats, destroys your muffler, probably not real great for the turbo. So I just like to leave it subtle unless I'm shooting a video for YouTube in which of course I like to show off. And if you retard the timing too far, especially on a stock motor, you can bend rods just by sitting on the two-step. I've actually heard of three, four people that have done that to their Miata motors just from two-step, so be careful with it. I don't really go much past zero degrees. Maybe um, two, three degrees retarded is about as far as I go, but be careful, guys, and play with this stuff at your own risk. Now, take a look at what it's like when you put all that stuff together, launch control, flat shift. Let's go do a couple pulls. everyone well that's it for the video i had an absolute blast making this one i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you learned something and i got a ton of killer stuff planned for 2018 i will see you soon peace out is it gonna be really loud uh